So our topic for today is how to spot a false inner guide from the true one. Guy, do you have anything that you'd like to share with us? Everybody asks questions like that. How do I know uh, the divine from what isn't divine inside of myself? How can I tell, you know, who's my guide, who's not my guide? And the reason that it's all confused inside of individuals is because every individual meets certain moments in their life and depending upon their conditioning, the type of character they are, that that moment elicits, brings out of them a certain reaction, a disturbance takes place. And most of the questions about how do I tell a real guide from a false guide are based on this idea that if I could have a real guide in that moment, then I wouldn't get myself into trouble and I'd get out of it if I found myself in trouble. Right. But honestly, the whole context is out of place. That's why it's so important for an individual to begin at least suspecting that what they have called their self-knowledge, what they've called their understanding, is somewhat, if not terribly, incomplete. Without a, a proper and constant context for our lives and the moments we meet, everything becomes an individuated context and then some kind of conflict based on whether I can get what I want to happen, apply it, and come out the way I want to come out. And the context, the real context for, in quotes, the word spiritual guide, is whether or not I understand the moment that I have found myself in where I'm suddenly feeling like I don't have a guide or the one that I had mm -hmm. misled me. Mm -hmm. Is, is the understanding that those moments, each and every moment, in one respect, comes with a guide already assigned to it. <laughs> but we don't know about that kind of interior guidance because we're so used to in the moment of meeting something that we don't want, suddenly feeling this and then going and looking for a guide relative to what has disturbed my life. And that's not what a guide is. A spiritual guide is not somebody that straightens out the conditions that disturb you. The true spiritual guide is that part of your own nature that's asleep, that reveals to you in the moment the real source of the disturbance, which is what's laying latent in your consciousness at the moment that life stirs it up. And that's a significant difference. Because one has me looking for something outside of myself to save me, and the other shows me that the only thing I need to be saved from is a misunderstanding I have about myself and the fact that I'm identified with anything that comes along and promises to rescue me. So to use a, a different set of words, if we're working to try and identify the difference between an authentic guide and a false guide inwardly, we must learn to think in, in terms of, number one, A, when moments come we don't want. Our typical attitude is to look at the moment as an adversary. <laughs> Something that I have to deal with, but that I can't quite deal with it as I am, so now I need a guide. Mm -hmm. Never suspecting, incidentally, that the condition I don't know how to deal with, I got there because I was guided there by what I thought was something working on my own best interests. But that's another story. So the first thing that has to happen is a person has to begin at least to suspect that, that real life, what is truly spiritual, is never adversarial in the sense of a separate self being set upon by something that's trying to do him or her in. And that's why, until we begin to realize most of, our, uh, most of what we look for in an unwanted moment, some disturbance, is something that's going to tell us how to uh, reassume control, how to dominate what has dominated us. And real spiritual work and the true guide, to use that word, has nothing whatsoever to do with domination, but it's intimately connected to illumination. So there's a very distinct difference between domination and illumination. Yes. When we meet life 
as an adversary because it threatens something that I'm identified with because that's all that can be disturbed, then I feel like something's trying to dominate me and I have to return tit for tat. I've got to get everything back in place. The very moment that I meet life from a point of it trying to take something from me and now me trying to hold on or get it back, that, that sets me into a, a position where I cannot see anything at all about what has actually happened. Because what I see as having happened is what my mind mm -hmm. has told me has been done to me. And it's told that I, I'm told that it's been done to me and now I must do something back. Mm -hmm. But that is not illumination. That's domination. The idea of illumination meets an unwanted moment from a completely different set of parameters. The illumination idea is that something has just taken place and I can feel a disturbance in myself. I must understand if I'm ever going to be illuminated as a human being, which is our purpose in life, that the moment is actually, that I think is dark, is actually a moment of illumination. The moment I don't want is actually a moment of illumination. What is it illuminating? The part of me that has come into that moment with demands, with things that I think have to happen in order for me to be safe and secure. Mm -hmm. And that nature, wherever it goes, by its very nature, which is something I'll get into in a little bit, that nature, by its, uh, its, its very existence, has already set itself against life. Mm -hmm. It has already done it, but it doesn't know it until life suddenly mm -hmm. manifests this opposing force to the want that it has, and then it looks as the opposing force as being something that came out of the blue when the opposing force came out of the initial want that lives unconsciously in the human being. Mm -hmm. so it seems like that's the false guide, though, the want. That, that, that's the false guide, and, and we can kind of... I was thinking about ways to qualify this so people get real... Uh, not a simple, but an easy picture of it. First, the difference between dominating and illuminating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Critical. Why? Because if I meet a moment where suddenly I am on fire, suddenly I'm, uh, I'm irritated, the idea of illumination means that the event has produced by its appearance an awareness in myself of something that I was not aware of as living in my nature, in my character. Certain demands that I have that people treat me a certain way, certain ways I look at life and nobody should do anything other than the way I see it. <laughs> right. You don't know what no, I'm talking about. No, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> that, in, that in those moments, the proper guide has appeared in the moment itself because the, the illumination is a revelation of parts of myself that I have been apart from, not knowing this was in me. And when I am shown parts of myself that didn't, uh, how do I say that, that weren't um, brought into existence because of unwanted conditions, but rather the unwanted conditions were mercifully sent to me to reveal these parts of myself that are always in some form of disparity with life, then in that moment, the guide is there. The guide does, the true spiritual guide doesn't exist to get me out of trouble. <laughs> the true spiritual guide exists to reveal to me the parts of myself that are trouble incarnate. Right. <laughs> because the difference between those two mentalities is me forever trying to cultivate a guide, a set of thoughts, of feelings that wind up not just justifying what's wrong with me, but actually become the support system for what becomes my suffering a day later. Right. Do you understand yes. all that? Yes. So some good ways to look at, catch ways to do it. Number one, the false guide is always the first to take action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to know a false guide? Something happens, what do I do? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know, and you may not act that out, but you're inward. You're going, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. What do so I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh -huh. And then, then out of the then a little voice says, "I'll help you." Uh -huh. 
Thank God. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you. Go straighten out that idiot. Mm -hmm. Go make some more money. Uh, get a, a tummy tuck. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it just talks to you and it prescribes an action to remediate the pain that the moment seemed to have produced in you. The moment didn't produce the pain you're experiencing. It revealed a nature that was spring-loaded with that pain, and now there's a chance, instead of being uh, picked up and carried off by that false guide, to recognize, okay, the first task here then is not to go into action the first task is the new action, which is I'm going to be still and I'm going to see the whole of what has been revealed to me in this moment. There's your new action and there is your new guide with you the moment you do it. Why? Because the new guide in the form of higher awareness, it cannot and will not compromise itself. Mm -hmm. Intelligence will not harm itself. So when we have an action that seems intelligent, but it produces karma or worse, causes conflict on the spot between ourselves and others, in that same moment, we have been led by a false guide. And who is the false guide other than the very nature that first was revealed by that moment and now tries to conceal itself mm -hmm. by acting out a guiding role? It is a false god. A false guide is a false god. It's a false god because we turn ourselves over to what it tells us to do and as it judges us and blames us, which is the next thing. True guide, real guide, never judges. Anything in you that judges you is false guide. And if you look at it, if you can understand again the context, well, it, it feels so real when I'm coming down on myself heavy-handed that, that that's the proof that I'm really not like this. But I just did this. So what is it that doesn't want to see that I just did the thing that I say I'm not? Well, the thing that is what I say I'm not is guiding me to do that. So it can remain concealed. True guide is always a healing force. False guide always a concealing force. Mm -hmm. Anything in you in an unwanted moment that tells you look left, right, up, down, at someone else, at yourself, mm -hmm. as the source of your suffering, is a false guide. The true guide doesn't direct your attention outwardly. The true guide shows you the reason you're in trouble to begin with is because you weren't attentive to the false guide that puts you through the hoop in that moment. You see? Yeah. Another example, the false guide never stops looking to have its decisions confirmed by life and other people. Uh, maybe you've seen this in yourself. You know, you start thinking something through because there's a problem. You can't wait to go talk to people about what you're going to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's a false guide talking to false guides. The real guide doesn't need to talk to anybody about the action that it's going to take because the real guide in the moment of the revelation has already acted. It's already shown you the actual source of the problem, which is an incomplete misunderstanding of yourself and your relationship to this life as it comes to teach you about yourself. And then the last one, and we'll get to it, one of the questions. The false guide seeks consolation everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people eat when they have a problem? False guide says, let's eat. <laughs> Let, let's make ourselves feel comfortable while we figure this out. Mm -hmm. The false guide can't <laughs> wait to God help, God help humanity. False guide cannot wait to go bring somebody else into the pain that it doesn't know how to deal with. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to get people to say, oh, that's terrible. It loves to be consoled. True guide does not seek consolation from anyone or anything outside of itself because true guide, it is in fact a reconciling force. It consoles you by showing you and releasing you from the thing that caused the conflict to begin with. Right. So it's a completely different set of parameters, all again beginning with this right context. Is In the moment, do I choose illumination? 
which means be still and see, know that I am, or do I choose to think and to do and then wind up repeating the pattern that I keep finding myself in. Right, healing versus concealing. That's it, healing versus concealing.